Everybody, let's clap it up for Kevin. Where is he, Kevin? So I've always considered myself uh, very blessed, good family, good health, um, educated, and I never thought about how lucky I was day to day until I studied abroad in France and I met my friend Mark, and his lack of luck just kind of highlighted my abundance of it. Um, my host family had this apartment in the center of town and a block away from school near all the hot spots. And, his family lived about an hour and a half away by like a commuter train. Um, the college hosted one day skiing for us and at lunch on the mountain, I met this beautiful girl and he um, got uh, food poisoning from the beef bourguignon. Um, and then he slipped and he got really badly injured on the ice and almost missed the bus on the way home. But, um, Things changed a little bit when we started taking classes. Um, for some reason, Mark and I decided to sign up for a class that was all about this obscure French poet. So it was already hard enough to take classes in French, let alone like French poetic language. Um, so I'm not really sure what our thinking was, but this little professor kind of conducted class the same way every day. He'd read an excerpt from the poem from homework the night before, He'd give his analysis, and then he would go to his class roster and just kind of look up and down, and he would choose a name. And he'd call that name, and then for the next 30 minutes, you had to be the one to have a conversation with him. And that was half your grade. So Mark and I would sit terrified during the 15 seconds while he scanned the list, and both of our names ended in M, so when he would pause around the middle, that was especially scary. <laughs> but it was always a good day when he would kind of look up and down and then be like, ah, Julie, or uh, <laughs> Gustave. <laughs> because that means it was gonna be a French student and we could kind of sit back and exhale and we weren't gonna understand any of the conversation anyway, so. <laughs> So we got through about half the semester until my day came. And he looked up and down his list and he was like, alors, uh, Kevin. <laughs> so I was like, um, we? Like, <laughs> like hoping maybe he had a different question for me. Um, but he didn't. And so I mumbled my way through like 30 minutes of nothing. Um, I threw in a couple of like, uh, and, uh, uh, donk. Because uh, I heard that that's what French people do, I think, when they're supposed to be thinking about stuff. And then, like, there was still time to kill, so I just started reading passages from the poetry. I was like, I don't know, but at least this is, like, coherent. Um, and by the time it was over, like some of the French students kind of nodded at me sympathetically <laughs> on the way out. And yet somehow Mark, in all his bad luck, made it all the way through, almost without ever having his name called. There were only 20 of us in the class. Some of the French kids had already been called twice. You had to be prepared. And yet Mark made it all the way. He couldn't believe it until the, the final class. And he and I are sitting there. I'm thinking I'm, I'm good because there's only one name that hasn't been called yet. And the professor looks up and down his list and it was almost like a shock to him. And he, ah, Mark. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> and I'm sitting next to Mark and I'm like, I didn't want to elbow him, I didn't want to draw attention, but he just sat there. Uh, Marc Mancini? Nothing. It was incredible. It was heroic, I, I, I couldn't believe it. He just pretended he wasn't there.
He was going to defy this life of just bad luck, and he was, screw it, I'm, I'm just going to stare straight ahead. I couldn't believe it. And finally, the professor called the name just one more time, and then he was like, okay, that girl. He went back to his list, and he was like, uh, uh, Kevin? 